and the only place we can start is that thrilling Europa League tie between Barcelona and Manchester United. 2-2 it finished. All the goals coming in the second half. Marcus Alonso opening the scoring in the 50th minute. Marcus Rashford replying instantly. Then United went ahead through Jules Koundé own goal. And uh, Rafinha managed to equalise for Barcelona. He put his ball into the box. It ended up going into the net. And it sets things up perfectly for the return fixture next week at Old Trafford. Let's welcome in Mario Melchiot as well to talk more about this. But I have to start with you, Stevie, because... Mm. I really thought there was a lot of quality on display oh, in this game. It down. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as as far as going forward is concerned, then I, I, I would probably agree with you. I think defensively, both teams will look at themselves and, and wonder why they gave so many opportunities to the opposition. But that only made it better for us watching it because it was just end to end. Yes, Barcelona had more of the ball, which which we knew was going to happen. But Manchester United on the break, particularly Rashford, I mean, he looks as though he's, he's, he's found an extra yard from somewhere. He's just running away from everybody. But, yeah, going forward, great to watch. Defensively, very questionable on both sides. Uh, Mario, how great was this game? Yeah, no, I, I agree with Steve. It was just like entertaining. You want goals. I mean, when you watch football games, I'm sorry, like when you're on the field, you don't want that to happen. But when you're watching, you want that. And I totally agree. If you looked at the team, especially in the middle, you know, the two Brazilian kids, you know, Fred and Casemiro, they, they, the team needed them. Regardless of what the, the back line was uh, going through, they still needed them. I felt like Fred, yes, like normally I, I really, like I rarely mention him, but I felt the, the game of today, I felt like he was really there. And also the tactical that they changed, you know, because Wechos, he dropped in a little bit. And then, you know, Rashford, they used that meters behind Barcelona really well. I, th I, I think Man United, um, when they go back at home, they will be very happy because the result is, is in their favour, I think. I think it was a fun game, Ali, this Europa League thriller that Stevie uh, doubted. <laughs> it was fun. It was back and forth. And while it was back and forth and it was open, I think Stevie makes a good point. It was mistake-ridden when you consider... You only have to go through the four goals to figure out, yeah, there were mistakes everywhere. Why is Fred matched up with Marcos Alonso <laughs> in a set piece? I don't understand that. In the case of the first goal by Manchester United, Marcus Rashford from a very tight angle shouldn't be scoring there against Ter Stegen, as good as Ter Stegen was in the game. In the second goal... If Manchester United has two players in the corner kick, Barcelona's got to go and send two players. Instead, they send one player, and I would argue it's actually half a player, because Rafinha defensively may no attempt whatsoever to take on or to be able to defend against Marcus Rashford. Mismatch, and then it's a known goal from Jules Koundé. And then Casemiro, who Mario just uh, highlighted there, Casemiro, as they're playing the ball out of the back, turns the ball over, ends up in the feet of Rafinha eventually. He's trying to find a cross into the box. No touch, and now goes in the back of the neck, 2-2. So all four goals come from plays that not only could have been, but should have been addressed properly from both teams, and they were not. So while it was fun, I'm not sure that it was well played. I think there's a difference there. It was fun, it was open, it was back and forth. There's 36 shots, which tells you that there's a lot of attempts on goal. But I don't know that either one of the coaches are going to look at this and say, man, defensively we were solid. And that's why this game was in the Europa League. And oh! Uh, just trying to go is. around so that you can just yeah, make it yeah, yeah, Just no, wanted no, to be right. There he is. Just wanted to be right. Which manager is happier with the result? Otto Stegen. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, ten, him too. Oh, sorry. Ten, oh, same. ten hag. Absolutely. He would have snapped yes. your hand off. Taking a draw. If it had been a 10-10 draw, he would have taken it. Mm. Because a draw away from home at Barcelona to bring them back home, no question, you have to think Manchester United are the favourites. But if they defend the way they did today, then maybe they won't be. I, I do have a question about the managers. And I'm not going to address Ten Hag for now. I'm going to... Or Ter Stegen, for that matter. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to focus on Xavi. Please do. Right. So coming into this match, the conversation about Barcelona hadn't been, if you've been following Barcelona, had not been about their attacking play because they really had not been scoring a lot of goals. It's been about defending. We've been talking about how many games that they have won one nothing over the last month or so. 
And so defensively, they had consistency. It was Jules Koundé playing right back, Ronald Araujo playing on the right side of the back line, Christensen, and then the only thing that was changing was either Alejandro Valde or Jordi Alba playing on the left-hand side, and those guys you can switch in and out. They're interchangeable. So today, we would have thought, because you have been good defensively, this is the way that you're gonna play. Oh no! Not only are we going to make the change of including Marcos Alonso for Christensen, which I, I, I did not understand, and while Barcelona fans may suggest, hey, but he scored a goal, that's not what he's there for. He's there to defend. And obviously, it's a speed mismatch with Marcus Rashford or anybody who runs alongside Marcos Alonso at this point in his career. And then, even more troubling, the idea of throwing Ronald Araujo, who had been so dominant as a center back, I'm going to play your right back. And then Kunde, who had been doing a job as a right back, now we're going to put you as center back. It threw Barcelona's back line all over the place. They have been so organized, so solid for a month. I don't know why you change it. And yeah. talking about Rafinha as well, he was visibly upset when he came off, substituted yeah. off in this game. Mm -hmm. Was that a wrong decision as well from Xavi? He, Xavi's talked about all these moments, saying he has to rotate the squad because of the busy schedule ahead. Right. So Rafinha is finally playing well, right? <laughs> There's been many a times in which Rafinha hadn't been playing well and he was still on the field. Now he looked at least dangerous. At least he was trying different things. He was cutting to the inside and cutting to the outside. But, but I think what Xavi is saying, you know what? We need some fresher legs. We need to bring somebody off the bench who, who, who can give, you, give us something different. I wouldn't, I wouldn't so much care about the substitution if there was another option coming off the bench, that wasn't Ferran Torres. <laughs> See, Ferran Torres hasn't been all that great. And so, I, I, I understand the reasoning from Xavi. I just don't think that it's a choice that he needed to make at that point. And then once Rafinha comes off the field, which I would say this to Rafinha, look, you haven't been all that great. I don't think you have a whole lot of room to be pitching a fit while you sit on the bench. Huh? You were actually getting quite a long run out there. Uh, it's about five, 10 minutes to go. Just go and sit on the bench and be okay with it, all right? I, I understand that you're frustrated, but you haven't done enough with this club and for this manager to be getting upset when somebody takes you off. One player who's been unquestionably great all season is Marcus Rashford Mario, once again continuing his fine form tonight. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, like, he's a joy to watch. You know, I, I listen to the guys talking, but th this is just like a footballer that um, I think, look, we know Rashford for when he started as a talent. Incredibly, he was doing things that similar to what he's doing now, but now you can see that he grown up so much in the sense of like um, when he came back, you know, like uh, when he came back in England, he had moments when you could see him talk as well that he felt like the fans were against him. He turned that corner and now he's rising on confidence. And the way Man United is set up, it's all in his favor. If you look as well, the way they play, all the balls go to him. Eh? When he wants the ball, he's going to get it. If he gets into a situation, they look for him. Also because, oh, come on, the pace that he has. And look the way they were set up. Uh, Rehorst, he drops in short. What do the other ones have to do? He creates, they only were creating, hoping that Barcelona's defenders will go with Tiger and Rehorst because they know something is going to happen and they have the, the possibility of beyond them. And then Rashford, just the way he plays, the goals he's scoring now. What is it, like, what, 14 now we're talking about? If a kid just plays like that, I think he oozes a lot of confidence. And also the self-belief is really good. And that's why I think he can do whatever he wants to do at the moment. And he's in a luxury situation because now people are talking, what is he going to do? Is he going to extend his contract? Is he going to stay at Man United? Or is the kid going to, you know, do something else? And he's in really a good position at the moment. How do you defend Marcus Rashford when he's playing like this, Stevie? Not like Rafinha. Um, unless you've got somebody who can stay with him, it's very difficult. You know, Barcelona, other than dropping way off, you, you have to trust that, that somebody is going to read the, read the pass, which is very difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the team is set up for him. You know, you, you talk about contrasting teams today and contrasting styles. I don't remember ever seeing Barcelona hitting a long ball in behind. I don't remember it. There may have been one, but I can't remember. Manchester United, on the other hand, they're not even, they don't even get their head up. Whenever anybody in the middle of the park, and it's usually Bruno Fernandes, but regardless of the name of the jersey, whenever they, whenever they have time, they don't even look. They turn and they hit it in behind. It's not, it's not a case of what will I do next. This is what they do. 
And Rashford knows, and everybody in United's team now knows exactly what they're doing without even looking up. I mean, that is huge for a football team when you're playing balls blind because you know somebody's going to be there. And right now, the team's set up for Rashford and, and he's actually proven that that's the right move. Because this guy right now really is unstoppable. You know, as I said, unless, unless you drop to the, to the edge of your box, then <laughs> you're in trouble, basically. I tell you how well he's playing. When he got free in the second half down the right-hand side, he takes a first touch forward. I'm thinking this is going back post, back of the net. And he mishits the ball and puts it in the 20th row. That was surprising. It's gone to the point now to where when he gets in a goal scoring position, you're expecting it's going in the back of the net. And to see him miss in the manner in which he did, it was kind of like, no, 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 Marcus, we don't want to go back to that level. Huh? You have us used to something different now. He is playing at an outstanding level and consistently good for Manchester United. Uh, he was fouled as well by Jules Kunde in this one, but nothing was given. Ten Hag was upset about that decision, Mario. What did you make of it? Look, the moment when, when Kunde came, I, I think Kunde also knows that he came in late. Like, he came in really late and Ten Hag lost it, and that's why he got booked for that. But the moment is, I just see, like, Rashford was going, his focus was going, he wanted to strike it, I'm sure that he wanted to strike it. But Kunde came, pushed him over, and he was close to even getting a red card for that. And I know people will say, like, oh, no, uh, it, it wasn't time. No, he was late. He know he was late. Should that have been a red? You... Absolutely. It was a free kick. And what actually did not help the referee was that almost, I think it was, I think it was in fact, it was straight after that, Barcelona go up the field and exactly the same foul happens outside the Man United box and the ref gives a free kick. I mean, <laughs> yes. you, it was... It was and you could see every single Man United fan thinking the same thing. Hold on a minute. It's the exact yeah. same one, except he didn't give that, but he gave that one. Yeah, that's, Steve, that's yeah, a foul, and that's a red you, card. Steve, oh, when yeah, you're on the well, field, exactly. when that happens to you, you go crazy, right? I will lose but, my head when that happens. <laughs> surprise, surprise, was the game being played? Oh. Barcelona! Well, uh, however, <laughs> Barcelona, wait a second, because Barcelona fans would argue... What about the handball by Fred? Well, because it, it wasn't a handball. What? Well, what? what? Handball. Talk to us about the handball by Fred. No, hold on a second. The, well, the, the, rules are, the rules are, if it hits, if it hits your, shirt, your shirt sleeve, is designated, basically, yeah. how as... How long is your it sleeve? Hits, if it hits... Well, that one's... A, does does yeah. your sleeve get to the <laughs> elbow? Yeah. So that's it. It's caught your sleeve. <laughs> so it's not a foul. No. First no. of all, it hits below the sleeve. And second of all, oh. there's an actual oh. arm movement by Fred that goes towards the ball, which we rarely see in a handball, that actually the, the arm goes towards the ball. I think that was a no-doubter handball. Yes. His hand goes towards the ball. Yes, it does. It does. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no, Mar Mario, you're the decider yeah. on this one. Yeah, Fred, handball, I, I yes or no? I, I have to give you handball. I am sorry, mm. Steve. I gotta go to your... <laughs> you know why? Why is his hand that high, Steve? Tell me why. Why is it that high? He doesn't have to be there. I don't, I, I don't think the height of his arm's got in to do it. The fact that it hits his jersey is the point I'm Wait, making. But, but it, that, it that's didn't what hit I'm his making. jersey. What, that, uh -huh. Listen, that's your opinion. My opinion is, <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> well, your guess opinion what? is wrong. <laughs> guess what? The referee... Yeah. And the VAR also oh. had the same oh. opinion oh, wait, as me. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Oh, sorry. Oh, wait, wait, I wait, wait, do wait, beg wait. your pardon. Wait, wait, I do beg your pardon. So, <laughs> uh -huh. a couple of days ago, you're going crazy on VAR, and today you're using it as your supporting argument. Oh, so you're just going to get a, no, no, you're no, going to get a sweeping saying... brush and say no. every VAR's a joke. Oh, you can't no, do that. No, no. What? You can't do that. No, no. But um, what I'm saying is, that don't use it as a supportive argument. It hits his arm well, below it his it jersey. Is. That's exactly what it is. Below his jersey should have been an A. I, I agree on what you said initially, but it hits the arm below his Var. jersey. That's a penalty. Ali, VAR is there to support the referee oh, and to oh, get no. the right okay. decision. Oh, so you can't say, oh, don't lean on it, VAR, it, it, because it, that's exactly why it, you've it's got It's amazing. Var. It's amazing <laughs> when you take this reasonable oh, yeah. approach Approach with VAR now when it suits let, you let and your argument. Talking. No, Are you going to let me finish? The ref went to look. The ref went to look. He went to look. Finished? He had the time to go and look. The ref went to go and look. He looked at the screen and then eventually he came back and he said, no pen because the guy was being pushed on his shoulders. And I was like, I looked at the reply and I was like, no, no, no. The hand was for me. Do you know what? I love, to touch it. I love how these two are bashing VAR, right? VAR, <laughs> we... 
we have had, we've had so many good decisions from VAR. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm willing to stick my neck out and say that not one of the two of them wants VAR to go away. <laughs> but yet, but yet they're sitting here <laughs> and using wait, 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 VAR as an excuse. Wait, 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 wait. wait saying wait, how wait, bad wait. it is. Wait. And wait, why am I leaning wait, on VAR? Wait. When it's oh hold on, I'm talking. You you, you talk <laughs> when I'm finished. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. VAR is there to be leaned on. So right. don't say don't lean on it. And the uh -huh. fact is, the guy in the VAR couldn't tell either where it hit Fred, or else he would have given a penalty. So that's why we use VAR. So if you two want to say it's a penalty, that's fine. I'm just saying, you can't go slaughter and VAR for no particular reason. First of all, are, are, are you now done? May I go? Yeah, you can go. <laughs> OK. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you right. a Right. I'm not slaughtering VAR. I'm slaughtering you. I'm not slaughtering VAR. What did he say? I am saying that you are now using VAR to support your argument, Correct. which you don't do regularly. That's all I'm saying. It has nothing to do with VAR. And I'm saying that they got it wrong. I'm saying they got it wrong. They didn't see it. Well, and, and, and have we seen VAR get it wrong it. before? Yes, we have. So uh, that, I think it was a handball. I think it was a penalty. OK. All right. All right. We were going to leave that one there just for well, the, the main, moment. The main man thought you were wrong. Just to let you know <laughs> as well, the camp now is full today with 90,000 in the stadium, Stevie. I think this, that probably had something to do with it as well. This uh, Europa League tie that nobody was interested in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pound on you, Stevie. Don't worry, you don't deserve it. Don't right look now. at me for it's support now. She's not piling fair. on. I'm not going to pile on. It's not fair. You're piling on. Mario, you mentioned Vote Veghorst in a deeper role. Ten Hag made some changes today. What did you make of them? No, I think I think look uh, in going forward, um, it was definitely that the uh, come on, you, whenever you play at Barcelona, it's a difficult moment to go there because it's always difficult. They the pitch is really big. Some of the players when they turn up, you know, the occasion and everything goes into you. So I know that like in certain occasion stadiums it can get to you. But the way they were playing forward, I, I felt like Man United played well attacking wise of course we highlighted some of the defensive mistakes okay that's part of football but i felt like there were two teams playing each other and trying to outsmart each other so i think this was a game of plays with also the coaches like ten half and Zavi, they were trying to outsmart each other with whatever they had but at the end i think we still watch the game of, of two teams that want to play football and i think that's the most important thing why are we watching this stevie were you impressed with ten Hag today yeah what about their second? Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> I wasn't impressed with Xavi. Uh, that's too easy. I wasn't impressed with Xavi. I mean, I 100% agree with Ali, the fact that what is he thinking changing around his back line that, that's been <laughs> kind of... that has been the rock mm. of, of the recent results? It makes no sense. The only thing I can think of is because the, old, the, the classic normally... For so-called big teams as well, it's the Europa League, I can get some players some games, some game time. That's the only thing I can come up with. But other than that, no. Xavi, Xavi's, Xavi's choice at the back, I thought, I thought was horrible. If you're going to rotate players, do it against <laughs> Cadiz on the weekend. You don't do it against Manchester United, even if it is Europa League. This was, I think, a big game for Barcelona. It wasn't the time to be rotating players in and out. It wasn't the time to change your back line, which has been the reason you have been successful over the last month. As for uh, Ten Hag, I would say that what impressed me most is the fact that this wasn't a team in Manchester United that went to defend as they come now. They were organized, and at, at times they were absorbing some pressure, but when there was an opportunity to get forward, they were doing so with a purpose and they were adding numbers in the attack and they were willing to commit those numbers. It became a back and forth because both teams were willing to play this way. And I think that's part of the approach. And now the new mentality of Manchester United in that we're not afraid of going to come now. We're not afraid that we're playing against Barcelona. Mm -hmm. We'll take the game to Barcelona whenever we have the opportunity to do so. Bad news for Barcelona. Pedri getting injured. It looks like he's going to be out for a month. How much of a blow is that to them? Yeah, well, it's, it's major. You know how special Pedri is to me. So this is a major <laughs> blow for Barcelona and a major blow for me personally. Look, in terms of what happens in the second leg, not only is it Pedri that is going to be missing, but Gavi will miss because of a suspension. And then we don't quite know the status of Sergio Busquets. Potentially, he's going to be missing as well. 
Dembele is not coming back uh, apparently anytime soon, so he'll be missing. And you start talking about important players and important positions for Barcelona, this is going to be a very difficult task for Barcelona in the second leg at Old Trafford. Who have you got going through, Mario? I, I have a feeling that Man United is going to do it, just because uh, just the way they play and the way they set up. And yeah, the, the highlight of, of the, the difficulty of Barcelona, I mean, just the, the players that they're going to miss, they are key for the team. Eh? This is this is a team that with the names that, uh, that we just talked about, those are all influential players for the team to make it tick. And I think this might be a problem when they go to Old Trafford. Stevie? Man United. Hello. Ah, uh, with a heavy heart, Manchester United. Oh, All right, well. No. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.